Morning, Greg. What's up, John? How are you, buddy? I'm here, mobile. Good, good. How you doing? Good, thanks. Good. Hi, Tula. Hi, Sue. How are you? Got you guys muted. Hold on. There you are. Hi. Hi, Hi Tula. How are you? I, I'm I'm hanging in there. <laughs> what you up to lately? I haven't seen you. I know. I had cataract surgery. Oh, and I'm having thing. a few things going on with it. So oh. I'm just kind of, I just, you know, it's good. It'll be all good. Awesome. Good for you. You feeling better or what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Good. Sue, how you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you. I'm going to keep you guys on, on behind the scenes here today because I'm at work. There you go. Good. Hey, thanks for joining <laughs> us, though. That's fine. Cool. All right. Well, I'll just give it a minute or two. I'm just waiting on Dee Dee. Um, so then once once she comes in, we'll uh, we'll get started with what she's got planned for today. And then we'll uh, we'll add some few things in there. And then if you guys have any questions, we'll, we'll just go from there. I'm going to do a screen share here. Um, while we're waiting on Dee, do you guys have any questions at all? Um, I do. So with the, when you're in app, app files, how am I supposed to leave a note to say, please close this account or please, this is a dead one. I don't remember what I'm supposed to do. Gotcha. Great, great question, Sue. Um, so let me log on here to app files. I'll show you guys right now. It's a good question because we have been getting a lot of those questions lately from agents because um, there's a few different ways you can do it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's a little bit confusing. I get it because app files only allows us as the admins to do a certain, like we can, we can make files dead or active stuff like that, but the agents um, need to make them pending just because right. we can't keep up with the pending. So it's a little bit confusing. So we get it, but it's, it's very easy. So what we'll do is I'll just go to uh, one of my files just so I can show you. All right, so when I'm on my file itself and say we're just doing an audit or I'm working on that file that day, and right. like Sue said, I need to I need to kill this file. I need to tell Didi or myself, hey guys, this file's dead. We're no longer working on this. I'm just gonna go, I can do two things. We just think it's easier to do create an update. Um, you can do create a task, but creating an update emails us automatically the second you do it. So for us, it's easier just to get an email notification, go, okay, Sue needs, you know, 5889 Bimini dead file. Awesome. So for awesome. you guys, you just go to create an update. And right here, you can just do dead offer. Okay. Um, and then right down here, you'll see, you'll see when you're on your file, you'll see your name down here automatically yep. checked, obviously, but just because I'm logged in as me, um, I'm going to check DD or myself. You guys don't have to check both people. So, you know, if you and I have been talking about the file, Sue, then just, just tag me because Dee Dee may be out of the loop. Or if you've been working with okay. Dee Dee, tag her because, you know, then I'll be out of the loop. Um, but regardless, we know if you put up there in this, in this section here, whatever you put up there, we know what's going on. So for me, even though I haven't been working on the file, I can know, okay, Sue, this one's dead. We're not working. This isn't progressing. I'll make this dead. So you can okay. just go like that. Create an update. Excellent. Create an update. Boom. And that'll actually populate right here one second let's put this guy come on come on so here once i create that update it's going to actually populate right here on this section okay so this is going to okay. be like think of this almost as like your facebook news feed if you will or or you know your your news headlines right so like this yep. is going to tell you everything the file's doing um you know during the process so you can see from email like every time you've emailed somebody or you know you've sent out an addendum to get signed you, you'll see all the uh the signatures let me move because i can see the background it's pretty bright for you guys i think sorry about that no that's great um and then i have one one more with with regards to this so let's Absolutely. just say this is this is your dead file yeah and the same people I've got, I've got a client who's put in five different offers and nothing's going through for the yeah. rentals. And it's a real pain in the neck to start over. Can yep. I copy one and then just update the old contract? Cause then I have all of their information already in there and just change the numbers and the so, address. Yeah, it kind of stinks. Cause unfortunately for every property, we need a new file. 
Okay. But there are just because of auditing purposes. So like, for instance, if the office as a whole gets audited, they can come in and what they want to see is like how many contracts you've written. We need to make sure, even if they're dead, believe it or not, um, we need to make sure all the paperwork is, is in that, um, you know, is in that file per se. So um, yeah, it's, it's just, unfortunately for every property, we're going to need a different file. Now what you can do, like I, I just was talking with an agent yesterday that's been doing a lot of rentals um, that what you can do is like, if you have their package of say all their credit reports, and right. Income, I do all that, big yep. package, save it on your computer. And then okay. what you can do is just every time you upload, you know, a new file or something like that, you can just go on and you can just, um, you can just create a whole new, um, like a whole new package. Um, okay. So okay. it's, it's, yeah, it's a little bit easier that way. Just cause yeah, you can, fine. yeah. When you go into the rental, you can be like, all right, boom, I need to just upload their whole package of stuff. A um, little bit easier, but yeah, it's still, I know it stinks. It's still a pain in the butt, unfortunately, for auditing wise. We just need a new file for, for every address per se. That's, that's kind of why we ask you guys to like put the, like here, um, this is the, the address, which everybody's been pretty good at. Um, but just because every, yeah, every file needs a new, or every address needs a new file, excuse me. So, yeah. Okay. And then I have one more question and I promise to shut up. <laughs> oh, no, no. This is what this is for. If I, I told one of my clients to send their, um, I don't know what it's called, the administrative fee, the amount that has to go to you guys yeah. directly. How do I know it's been received? Was that get updated in this? Uh, yeah, we can. So what we can do is we can either do an upgrade update. Usually I'll just text it to you guys and say, Hey guys, I received the funds or whatever. Um, when we get off, shoot me a text. Let me know which one I, I don't, okay. the, the rentals are kind of like, it's crazy. Cause we'll just have people show up in the office and, and hand us checks for okay. random rentals. Like we, and we don't even know just cause like we're not being updated in the files, if you will, or like the files aren't being so to backtrack, that's kind of why we asked the agents to put everything in pending because okay. For Dee and I to go through app files every day and just like bug the, the heck out of agents to be, hey, where where is this at? Where is that? And you'll see we do that in the auditing process. Um, but it, it's it's tough for us. That's why we ask the agents. They know what's going on on the on the you know in the transaction timeline, so they know, hey, this this thing's going under contract. This thing's pending. Okay. Um, so with that, we know if it's pending, then I know, hey, Sue just put this this, you know, Sue just put 5889 Bimini pending, right? Right. So I know, um, for me, I know that, that is, Tim, what's up? How are you? Um, I know that, cool, now Bimini is pending, so we're good to go. I can expect a, a check or a transaction fee or something like that. It just keeps okay. us updated in the, yeah, in the process. But if, if we, you know, if it comes in, sometimes we'll get, like I said, we get a lot of people that just drop checks off. We don't know what it's for, you know, it stinks if like the check's not memoed. So if we do have a check, uh, we, we do like wiring. It's easier for the clients to wire sometimes um, because they don't have to come into the office. You guys can find all the information uh, on okay. any file you create, all the, the wiring information. If you go to add forms and then your second package or section here is in-house forms, you'll have our wiring info. So business awesome. account okay. is for sales Good. and then you'll see a rental wire account. So if you guys are doing anything rentals, just Obviously, remember, look for rental account wire, anything sale wise, listings, buyers, whatever, uh, you know, you'll see business accounts. So two different accounts there. Just keep that in mind. Um, OK, great. Wire, and so, if yeah, if it's easier for them. So you said pending a pending like I have a person that I'm the, the it's almost done as far as the rental goes. We got as far as everything's accepted. She's HOA approved. I changed that to pending then. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, yep. hundred percent. So just real quick. And this is. Uh, you know, some agents forget to do it. It's, just, it's not a big deal. We just, like we said, we ask you guys to do it because it just, it's easier mm -hmm. for us to keep up with that. Um, but when you're on your file itself, you'll see yep. this, this section right here where the, you got the address, which you can always edit that. Um, you, and then right here, you kind of have where the, the listing Perfect. at. So actually this one is pending. So I can go in here, I can click change. Okay. And then this is going to look a little different from, for you guys, because us as admins, I'm logged in as the admin, obviously, I have all this stuff down here right. where I can make it a dead offer. Um, okay. That's the feature that you guys as agents don't have, unfortunately. But okay. like we said, we just went over, you'll just, you'll just do an update for that. But for this one, you go right here, you'll see current files, it's inactive. I can change it to a pending buyer, pending listing or pending lease. This is a listing, so I'm just gonna click pending listing. And then I'm just gonna click save changes. 
And then you'll see the background over here change colors and now it's pending listing. Awesome, thank you very much. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I'm not gonna bring that up okay. now. So we'll do, an, uh, that's gonna be confusing because not that many people are on right now. Um, sorry, we're having a side discussion. Um, so yeah, any uh, anything else before we uh, did you get started here? I'm good, thank you. You bet. All right, let me get rid of this. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, so Dee, Dee what did you want to go over? Uh, well, um, actually, just a couple things. One was the MLS status um, that um, the policy, new status policy came out. But before I do that, um, I just wanted to throw out there that if an agent is buying their, you know, purchasing or listing their own property, um, when you give up your commission toward the uh, purchase price, you'd have to check both brokers have to actually agree that on that. So you'd have to, um, before you sign an executed contract on any property you're purchasing, just check with Greg first. Um, it happened, um, an incident happened where an agent that, you know, was newer and their commission split, you know, was whatever it was, it, they, they used it as 100% that the broker would give up their commission too, which they can't. They can only buy a house under their commission. So he ended up having to forfeit money at closing this agent to pay home sales because of his commission split. But the other thing is it's illegal actually to write in, you know, like, oh, I'm giving up 100% because you don't get 100%, you know? Um, so yeah, so next time, if you're doing any, you know, personal purchases, just run it by Greg, because he actually has to run it by the other broker involved too. And they have to kind of sign off or agree verbally on it. So, um, yeah, so just talk to Greg first about that. Um, if you're going to purchase. Yeah. So that's, that's a good point. Um, so just to kind of go in depth a little more as to what happened, I'm glad Didi brought that up. Um, you know, we do obviously being a smaller boutique, we do case by case situation regarding, you know, personal transactions. Everybody's do a personal transaction, but um, we do have some agents that don't don't produce at all. And then what we do is we don't give them a free transaction, obviously. So for our, our working agents, you guys are getting free transactions, um, one, you know, personal free transaction. It's And again, like I said, it's case by case. There's different situations. That's the benefit of being at boutique. Um, but as a little backstory, this agent was purchasing for himself. Uh, and he actually worked in the purchase price of, you know, getting no commission in the deal. He worked that down in, in the original purchase price of the house and wrote up an addendum stating um, that, you know, the agent, the buyer's agent himself is not collecting any commission whatsoever. Um, and generally what happens is title companies will reach out to me as the broker if they receive an executed addendum like this stating, hey, your agent's giving away all their commission. Um, and depending case by case, we'll say, oh, no, you know, home sales still collects a commission on that. Or yes, no, it's 100% forfeited commission. Um, we didn't receive a call in this case. Um, so what happened is we ended up, you know, having to take the, the buyer had to bring more money to closing to actually cover the commission portion just for, for his split. Um, so, you know, we did actually learn a few things there. Um, you can do that because it is case by case uh, regarding you know, with the transaction, some people get 100% at their firm. So therefore, they are able to give away their whole commission if they if they please. Um, you know, we don't work like that, unfortunately, here. So it's a little bit different for everybody. So um, yeah, we, we kind of learned that the hard way a couple transactions ago. So um, just if you guys are giving up any sort of commission whatsoever, whether you're listing or you're buying for yourself, um, just reach out to myself, reach out to DD before um, you guys do any sort of addendums whatsoever. We just want to make sure it's worded properly. Um, and, and before we go ahead and, and then we have to kind of backtrack. So any issues like that, just, uh, reach out to us and, you know, we'll, we'll make sure it's all squared away before moving forward, before you guys execute anything. Yeah. Good points. Um, so the only change I see now coming up, it's going to go into effect the end of this month, actually just another day or two is the status changes. And you probably all got the email. Sometimes I did, don't even read their email, but this was kind of an important one. So the withdrawn status is going to be added 
um, for actually take the place of temp, temp off. So this is for off. the MLS. Yeah. So you should have received the uh, RAPB. Um, I'm not sure about JTHS if they're changing this up. John or Sandy may yeah. be able to. Uh, Maybe John and Sandy. Go. I didn't get an email from JTHS, so I, I don't know. Yes, Matrix, so they're on Matrix. Uh, if, if I can intercede there, yes, the JTHS are on Matrix, and basically the MLS, Flex MLS, are co coming in line with Matrix with those actives under contracts and the withdrawals. They're already standard. On already Matrix. doing that? Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, so thanks, John. So the withdrawn, yeah, it was previously temp, temp off, which we all use a lot, you know, if they wanted to paint or whatever, you know, they just want to take it off the market for a little bit. Um, so the contingent, so you, you will see withdrawn, but no more temp. Off. Temporary off market yeah. will not be an option right. anymore. The uh, second one was contingent will be removed and the listings are going to be actually moved. You'll see your listing if it says con reads contingent will be moved to pending, pending. So, but your contingencies can be, be identified in the active under contract or pending. So if you have a backup offer, it's going to be renamed active under contract, which I like a lot because backup kind of scares people away. It's like, oh, I don't know how many backups they have and I'm not even gonna look at the property. But when you see the word active under contract, it's really neat because you know, well, they're seems a little more open you know to showing so so backup will now be active under contract so when you go and you're not going to see the word backup anymore as of wednesday yeah i believe the first yeah. Yeah. 30th so so when you move it to when you move it to active under contract when does it change to the next status like how do you you you, you have to go once you you know, say you get all the backups you want, or it's now pending because it's through title and blah, blah, you know, you're at the next stage. You have to go in and change it. Let's actually look at it right now because yeah. it says the 30th. Let's look at it. Yeah, it okay. says the 30th. Yeah. And I can change. I have something. To yeah. Change. So you'll have to change, you have to change your status. Okay. Um, yeah. So you would go to the, you know, the, the little three lines and, you get a you get a menu and it will say at the top middle change listing change status. Let's see here. All right, so can you go, go to so, menu? So, so the act, the active under contract basically will be if there's contingencies and once you pass your contingency, you then make it pending. That's right. That's right, John. Right. And yeah. then on the temporary off market, it does say now that you only have a certain time. Like I think it's thirty days. You can only be off market thirty days or else you have to withdraw it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Depending, depending on the listing agreement, because... Here, so you can, you can, the person can cancel the listing with you, but they are also obliged, to the, you know, it's still a year's contract and they can't sell it without us getting any commission on it. I forget, there's something in the, May, in the middle of the contract saying, the termination period, but That's right. as, far as, the, as far as the MLS is concerned, you only can stay right. temporary off market for approximately 30 days, you check the wording, and right. then it has to be withdrawn. So you're right. So if it's pulled off the market for an extended amount of time, the agreement that you have, the list agreement still remains in intact. In, in, in so a lot of times people will you know, withdraw it, take it off the market, thinking they can sell it themselves or what have you, but they're still locked into that agreement. So yes, they can do that, but they're still gonna have to pay the commission that's on the list agreement. I have a question, Mika here. Hi, Mika. Hi, I'm sorry I couldn't make it. I was on my way there and something happened. So I'm just- Hey, this is, we understand totally. It's, <laughs> it's, it's getting busy, everyone's busy. Um, so if I have the, the uh, uh, listing that is was listed, but he's uh, gonna list it again, just temporary off market. It's been, I'm sure, a little over 30 days. So, do I need to take it off MLS? So that status is going to be. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. So it's kept at 90 days. You don't have to whisper. Oh, I think it just goes back to active, actually. Does it? Yeah, after that time period. So it says temporary off-market status will now be capped at 90 days. Mm -hmm. 
So you have three months basically to leave this your listing temporary off market. If the listing surpasses the 90 day mark, it will either need to be placed in the withdrawn status or back to active status. Yeah. Yep. So as a reminder, temporary off market means a listing is being pulled off the market for renovation, seller out of town, et cetera. And the listing agreement remains in effect with the broker. Mm -hmm. So yeah, with if, if you can still do temp off market for 90 days, but then it's gonna be placed either back to withdrawn or active status. So if they're doing like some paint work and stuff like that, and it's earlier than 90 days, great. You can go back to active. Um, if it's longer than the, those 90 days, it looks like it has to be in the withdrawn status. Okay, he's just and letting uh, a, a friend stay in there because it's is a situation. So that's the thing. And he says, as soon as he's done staying there, it's back on market. Okay, yeah. So that makes sense because like the they're stating that the withdrawn status will be added to flex to be considered like consistent. Excuse me, with matrix is an option for listings that need to be pulled off the market for an extended amount of time, but the broker and seller slash landlord agreement remains intact. So yeah, if they're like, hey, we we're gonna sublease it to some friends for six months or three months or whatever, then you're best just putting it in the uh, withdrawn status right off the bat. Okay. Um, but you're still entitled. To and that's, yeah, that's the same if like, if you guys, if the seller wishes to agree and terminate their listing agreement, but the listing broker wants to maintain that agreement. So the seller wants to cancel with you and you say, hey, we can cancel, but you're, you know, you're still gonna owe commission if you relist. You, you would put it in the withdrawn status as well. Could I just also add that, you know, it depends on the circumstances there, you know, in the contract, it's unconditional. If you want to make it conditional, you, there is um, an addendum. And the reason that would come into play is that say your seller gets cancer, God forbid, or, you know, something happens and you, you know, you, you know, it's, it's really hard. It's going to be hard for them that you, Okay, you can just sell it, you know, because you're going through a tough time, whatever. It's just case by case. You can right. find an addendum for to to actually, you know, so the broker won't get commission. But of course, that would have to go through Greg. Got it. Okay. It just, just depends. Most of the time, it remains intact because they want to sell it themselves or some shady reason. But which is not in the case, obviously. So um... yeah, yeah. But you know there are there is an addendum for if you want to let them out of the list agreement. Got it. So this says pending listing under contract. So yeah, see it's worded a little bit differently. So now it's pending listing under contract. Then down here you can see hold listing temporary. Up to ninety days, right? Yeah, I believe so. So, so let's see. It'll say. Select the date under contract type. So yeah, see, it's a little bit different. So it's active under contract. So that would be your backup status. So this property, for instance, would be in backup status. So I'm going to go to active under contract, but you could go right to pending if you wished, um, which the pending, didn't they say was only a certain amount of time, right? Um, it doesn't say. Well, we'll take this package. We're reading off a package yeah. from the RAPB um, so email. We're actually going to, we'll bundle this in a PDF and I'll throw it on like the Facebook page and, and we'll do a mass email to everybody so everybody can see it. You don't have to go back in your emails and go look for it from uh, RAPB and all that good stuff. So we'll, we'll send that package to you so you can kind of see it's explaining everything about the, um, you know, about the dates and, and what, what everything's now called. So yeah, save, all information gathered, save. So simple right, as that. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. So one of the things about the dates on MLS contracts now is they want you to put the expected closing date in there yep. when you now fill out your MLS sheet. And now if it, let's say you need an extension, well, it's down to you to write, like update the MLS to say it's been extended. You know, if you're saying it's going to close April 1st mm -hmm. and then they ask for an extension to April 7th, you have to go and you have to go and correct the MLS and say it's now uh, expected to close on April seventh. Yeah, yeah, good point. So that's that's another part yeah. about it. Yeah, that's a good point because that that would be a lot of things that people can tend to forget. Honestly, you just you know you're in the heat of the transaction and you you forget to change that on the MLS. So that's a good point. That's right. Yeah, you got to transaction coordinator. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good well, point. Yep. Good, good one, Zach. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's a good point. I, they're they, doing like four deals for me right now. I still can't say enough about them. They're great. We're using it for the Jupiter Farms. We got a contract on Jupiter Farms. We're using they're for phenomenal. them. They're phenomenal. Yeah. 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 They're 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 awesome. So, yeah, definitely worth it because that's the type of stuff that they take off your shoulders as the agents for sure. So. Really, I mean, true testament right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, um. So. What else you got? Well, the only other thing, we do have a W-9 form for your rentals. Um, if people, the other side needs them, um, they're, it's the newer updated. They actually only go like two years. So it will say 2018. It goes through the 21st to 2021. That would be three yeah, years. Yeah. So we updated because ours was 2017. So you'll see it looks the same. It's just neater type written, but um, typed, but. So that's on, on your in-house forms now, if you need it. And if any realtor broker says, oh, it says 2018 on it. Well, that's the one that that's current. That's the one you're supposed to use. They don't make, make them only every three years. So at the end of the year, next January, they'll be coming out with the, the new ones. Um, so that's on there for you guys. So the only other thing I just wanted to, you know, kind of discuss was just like I do every single meeting, the disbursements are due five days before closing. Um, just get them into Greg for his signature. And when you get the signature, ask for his signature, click that little box that says date and then place it because we've been getting all of the disbursements, actually all of them just have Greg's ask for his signature, but they really should have the date on it too. Um, for reference, you know, so if you could just do your disbursements five days before, and then if there's any, you know, any issues with, you know, the math or anything like that, we can kind of get it straightened out and back over to the title company so you can get paid at closing. Um, and if you would, after your closing, I mean, I know they're mostly remote now. I mean, you're certainly welcome to have your side or even you come here and use the conference room with the closer. I'm a notary, so we could notarize everything get you copies for your customer. So you're more than welcome to come in for your closings if you want to. Um, but if not, if you would just after the closing, go grab the checks and your check and the settlement statement is crucial to have because we can't close out the file without it. So you could either bring it by with everything or just upload it uh, from, you know, from wherever you are. So it's who, on your I'm just curious who, because I haven't done a closing. Is it, who, does, who does the notary when it's virtual? But there's a virtual notary that, yeah, com yeah. That, that, that the title company hires. And they do it virtually? Uh-huh. Yep. Oh. Now they can do it virtual. Yeah. In Not fact, all of them. Our, our title yeah, company only, can. Yeah. Like ours really? will do it yeah. as a mobile notary that will come here and they'll get so it done. in the person physically remote. comes here. They don't have to now. They can, you do, can do it. You do it just like this. Yep. I did my refi on it with our title company, mm -hmm. with Olivia. So. They do it right there. They witness me sign it just like they're witnessing me sign it person. Right. But there there. is a notary. They're just she's the notary. Yeah. She's a, yeah. Yeah. She and she does it remotely. Yeah. Right. Okay. She doesn't have to be physically. But there is there. a not a person who's uh, I'm a notary okay. here. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah Diddy's a notary, a notary the attorney's a notary. But I'm yeah. saying it just because they, they they just witness it virtually. They don't right. they notarize. They don't. No, they, they do, do notarize. They they don't write. Correct. Their their software allows them right. to be able to do it yeah virtually. So there's not an actual person sitting next to you doing it. It's done through the computer. It actually takes and a lot. And signature is done virtually? Or everything. Everything electronically is, and yeah. Then. And it does take a lot to get that special license mm -hmm. to do virtual because Olivia and Sean, it took them a long time. So like Greg said, not a lot of places offer Which that. Which is a huge benefit to all your clients. Yes. Buyers, sellers alike. Uh, well, buyers, you, I, don't think, I don't think you can do it. Um, no, they're, they're starting to do it with yeah. buyers now. Yeah, yeah. we just think it's a buyer. huge benefit because right. you got a seller who's out of town, mm -hmm. you know, they don't have to mail it. He doesn't have to go. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. client who owns, you know, who has an LLC, but his wife's a partner on the LLC. And depending on what title company, they require the wife to sign. Well, the wife and the husband are never, ever available to do it together. So it's a big cluster. Right. So this virtual takes care of that. It, and a lot of places do not offer it. Yeah. So it's really nice. That Does the state license the virtual? I don't is know. Is that a different agency? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just curious. I don't okay. know. Olivia would know. Olivia would know. Who's Olivia? She's our title attorney. Oh. Yeah. I think and we she, gave you the, her card last yeah, time from did. producer's she title. Did. Yeah. Olivia and Sean. Sean is like the vice president of producer's title, and Olivia is the attorney. 
Um, as far as, so we've had some, some, uh, you know, new agents signing on, um, and some agents doing some listing agreements and buyer side stuff. Uh, just real quickly, I won't, I won't go through. We actually just did a training on this. That's on the, uh, our YouTube page that you guys can check out. But as far as what's required, you know, some people are coming from big corporations or other boutiques, um, you know, where they, they're inundated with paperwork and, you know, business disclosure, affiliate disclosures and this and that. Um, as far as what's needed, whether you have a landlord, a listing for a buyer or for a seller, um, whether you have a tenant or whether you have a buyer, what's required from us at Home Sales Palm Beach is only that agreement or that as is contract or that contract to lease and then the one page broker disclosure. So we don't require any affiliate disclosures, anything like that. Obviously, it's case by case. So if you have a, you know, a sale that requires a lead paint disclosure, obviously that stuff's included. Um, so it's case by case. But as far as actual, you know, what we require from the office, it's just the broker disclosure and whatever forms are needed for that transaction. HOA disclosures, lead paints, all the extra stuff. That's just going to be, you know, per what home you're you're purchasing or selling. Um, so. It's, it's easy to find that um, if you guys are on your file, you just go to add forms and say I'm doing a listing. I would have my listing agreement here over in this section. So here's exclusive right of sale listing agreement. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I can erase in that search bar. And again, the second section is going to be in-house form. So this is all, everything that's added for us as the agent, as the broker. Okay. So um, the only thing we're going to need from you guys is that broker disclosure in all caps. You can see it. And then there's actually an asterisk next to it. Um, that's the only thing that's going to be needed. So if I'm doing a listing agreement and I'm sending this over to Tim, who's my seller, I'm going to use that exclusive right sale listing agreement transaction broker. And then I'm going to use this brokerage disclosure, which if I click I can click this and it'll add it over here, or I can click the add button, or I can click the magnifying glass and view it. So if you guys aren't sure if it's the right, you know, the right page, but you know what it looks like, maybe you're just confused at the wording, you can always click that magnifying glass and then check it out. And this is the only thing that you guys will need. Um, it covers the rentals. Yeah, it covers rental stuff. It covers, uh, you know, all the legal so, stuff. So can I ask a question about the, the broker disclosure? Is there any way to have a separate one for renters because when I'm right now only working with renters and every one of them is like, what's this energy efficiency rating thing? They like, automatically catch number five. And I'm like, I, you know, it has nothing to do with you because there's no inspection period. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. It's just, yeah. so it's general. So, I mean, basically you could just tell them like, Hey, it does, just doesn't have anything to do with the transaction. Um, because I I, do, but... I, yeah, a rental one would basically be the same one. Um, okay. Yeah, there, it's a, it's basically a general form from broker to broker, honestly. Like if you looked at this one compared to other ones, it may be laid out different, but it's going to have the same exact stuff in it. Okay. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really make sense for us to do two of them just because then it's just more paperwork for you guys to remember. Um, so at that point, like if you have somebody that questions that, just say, hey, don't even pay attention to it. This That's covers what sales. I told her. Okay. Yeah, it covers sales and rentals. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's just, it'll be easier that way. Whoops. Um, mm -hmm. Just because, yeah, if we do another one, then we start getting into where we'll do that more often. Then next thing you know, there's like four different types of paperwork for one thing. And People we're trying to make it easier for you guys as far as like, yeah, instead of having two different things, you know, let's, we'll keep it at that. But Some just newer agents that uh, have a sale might grab this one instead. It just yeah, just, just tell them like, hey, sorry, okay. this is for buyers as well. It's just a general form that, you know, it's, right, it's not fair. per transaction based. So yeah, that's Thank really you. it as far as like what's needed paperwork. That's kind of been a big question lately is just as far as what is needed for the office paperwork. Um, that is it. Just literally just the broker disclosure, um, all caps and asterisk. Grab that one, put it in with whatever forms you're using. Uh, I'm not saying that's the only thing you'll need if you're writing as is contract. That's just what the office requires um, for that. Um, MLS report, obviously, but that's going to be, you know, when you're writing up an offer anytime, just, just add in that MLS report as well. Um, so I know what else we want to go. Let's see here. Close that out. Can I just say one thing about the yep. leases? So I just wanted to touch base real quick on the lease. Um, there are some newer agents that are actually on the contract to lease. They will put in 
um, that the first payment, you know, the first month or what have you is due at move in, you know, so yeah, so you can't do that because if you haven't even signed the lease yet, you know, so um, it does take like they, they're, they're going to tell you what they want. If it's not your listing, they're going to tell you anyways, but um, it's, you know, you, you would need to pay that upon signing the first month upon signing the contract to lease at least. And then of course, if it's a seasonal there, they might want it as far ahead as a year ahead, you know, um, Dawn was doing one actually, I don't know if she's online, but it was, it was kind of funny because she was dealing with a Keller Williams agent and um, they told her, you know, she had a seasonal three months for next year, 2022. And they said to her, we'll just send in the total three months to Keller Williams to Patry for wherever they hold it. She said, well, don't we need paperwork? Like, you know, I need a, at least a contract to lease. And they were like, no. We'll just write the address down with your escrow. Well, that's not going to fly at all, you know. So thank goodness, you know, she checks with us on every single thing before she does it. And she just didn't feel right about it. But a lot of agents would just go ahead and do it, you know. And uh, so she, you know, she found out that, no, they have to have legal paperwork in order, you know, at least the contract to lease. Uh, we would like the lease agreement for the year ahead. You know, it's more legal, but at least with a contract to lease and it's all signed, mm -hmm. you know, you could submit that. But that's very normal for annual, for seasonals to get it a year in advance. So um, I know Lisa's on, on with us right now and she had some things she wanted to go over. Um, so Lisa, if you're, if you're there. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good, good. So yeah, Lisa and I were chatting yesterday. There's some things that um, I think she wanted to to, to go over, um, if I'm not mistaken, right? So, um, or, if, or if you just have anything in general for the agents, it's crazy market. Um, obviously you're working, working with buyers yeah. a lot, so. Yeah, um, it's, you know, it's been very busy. Um, and one of the things that I've been thinking about, because this happened to me twice in the last couple of months is there seems to be some confusion, I think, with um, what happens at the closing table in terms of funding and what are we waiting for when we sit there um, after, you know, somebody's taking out a mortgage, they're at the closing table and the buyer has finished signing and everybody's sitting there everyone's you know anxious and happy and wants the keys and the sellers waiting for their money and there's a delay you know it's there's you know time is ticking by and you're running out of small talk you know amongst each other it starts to get a little bit awkward and the closing agent says okay i'm just going to send all the paperwork up to the lender and um you know we'll uh we'll see what they need we need to get the loan funded so funded funding number that's like you know the words that you as an agent want to hear and you know that's what finishes the process basically um if you don't know the title agent a lot of the time they won't tell you you know what's happening behind the scenes when they walk out of that conference room so what does happen is there are some of the closing docs the buyer just signed they have to be sent up to the closing department of that lender. And what you really want in a perfect world is for that funding closing person to be sitting there just waiting for this paperwork so they can review it. I would say 90% of the time, a closer will forget to get a signature. They'll uh, not send up some trailing documentation that that, that the lender needs and there'll be a little back and forth going on with them hence the 5 10 15 20 minutes that goes by um or they'll come back and they'll need another signature from mr smith whatever the case may be but what happens is and this is uh this is why it's always good if you're dealing with an agent especially as myself being a lender that they know you they they like you back and forth is they come in and they're like, yeah, we're still waiting for the lender. And they don't tell you anything that's happening. So you're sitting there going, this was such a perfect transaction. And now my, my buyers and sellers are getting really ticked off. And it's just, you know, it's not a good situation. Um, so 
that's what's happening behind the scenes. Um, things are being done, but you might not be um, you might not be told what's happening. So sometimes if I'm not at a closing, I get you know a text or a phone call and I and I tell people call me because I know this is what happens now. Um, and I'll say, yeah, let me let me follow up on my end. And a lot of the times the closer, I mean, I'm sorry, the title company will just, you know, be working on something else and they've got the funding number sitting in their email. So what I do is I tell my closer if I'm, whether I'm at the closing or not, when you send that funding number to the title agent, send it to me too, because I want to be all over that because at the last minute, the lender will get blamed for everything. Um, you know, for the, the lack of funding for, you know, sitting there for two hours and depending on the lender, they may, they may be responsible, but the way that we do it is like, as soon as we get those, those documents up to the um, closing department, we review them, we respond within five minutes to that, that title agent and say, we need this, this, and this, um, and they do their back and forth. So going forward, my point is, is that you guys need to know what is happening behind the scenes so you don't sit there looking silly like, well, geez, I don't know what's happening. What's the lender doing? Blah, blah, blah. You, you need to know so you know how to guide people, keep them at ease. And if it looks like you're dealing with somebody out in California, a mortgage company there, or somebody that you're not familiar with, um, you have to have your plan B in place because I've seen delays that, you know, up to two hours um, waiting to get that, you know, that funding number, your plan B is, hey, let's go across the street and get a cup of coffee. Hey, and they're not going to be happy, but it's just to fill some time up. Um, the other thing beyond that is, um, well, let me let me stop. Does anybody have any questions about what I just said? Or can anybody identify and need to like elaborate on any of it or it, anything? Not over here, I don't think. Not here. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, so so the title agent is trying to get the funding number we know that what's happened now twice um for me like i started to say in the last two months is after you have the funding number that's when the closing agent gets the okay from the listing agent to hand over the keys and the garage door clicker and all that good stuff and you're on your way what has happened is if the morning if you're having a morning closing the loan is funded and everybody's ready to, to leave the office and the closer title agent says wait a second i don't have the wire from the lender we've got the but we've got the buyer's money in there but we don't have the wire from the lender um that is potentially another issue so if you schedule a closing at nine o'clock in the morning and you're not working with me you really want to talk to that lender and say the closings at 9 a.m. We need the lenders wired to go out the day before. Otherwise, if it doesn't, I can guarantee you that that money is not going to hit that title company's account if they send it first thing in the morning. You're finished at 10 o'clock and that wire may not be there. And that is one more thing that you as an agent are losing control of, um, you know, with your buyer being unhappy the last part of the transaction. So what can you do about that? Because you don't control wires. You can know that if it's me that's doing it and it's a nine o'clock, 9.30, 10 o'clock closing, my company sends it out the night before. Um, if it's later than that, we send it out first thing. If the, if the wire does not hit, even if we do everything right, there have been some issues because all the money is going through the, the feds and the, their system. And sometimes it gets held up before it hits the title company's bank. But what should satisfy a title agent is the federal reference number that we provide them. So if something, God forbid, money gets hung up, wherever it gets hung up in the United States, I don't even know. But if it gets hung up, then you should, the, the, the funding number should satisfy that issue to prove that the money has been sent. So Another thing, you don't have to be an expert on federal reference numbers and all that kind of stuff, but it's another thing that I guarantee you is going to happen at some point in your career, and you need to know what does it mean? Okay, we don't have the lender's wire yet. When did they send it out? Oh, they sent it out this morning. Okay, so it should hit in about hour and a half to two hours. 
at the most. If it still hasn't, then you ask the lender for their reference number, their wire reference number. That's what title should do. But I really truly think that this is the last memory that everybody has from their experience and you want them to call you again or have their kids call you, you know, for a, a transaction. And we need to have as much information and knowledge as we can about the process. You don't have to know all the behind the scenes, but what I just told you will really help you to understand and ask the right questions and, you know, just look like the experts that we all are to uh, get everything, you know, closed out and everybody's happy. Um, any questions about that? Not here. No, Dee and Greg, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, it's yeah. yeah, yeah. It could be such a pain because the whole transaction goes smooth, and then you get held up for an hour or two, and it, like you said, it's the last kind of thing the buyer thinks about. And yeah, it's even though between us we know it's fine, it, but it, it can create a headache for sure. And they always yeah. want to blame their agent. <laughs> sure. They want somebody. Yeah, they but want what somebody I to blame like whose fault is this? You know, and they don't know. Yeah, and that's why I was saying comes back to like I can picture like 10 different title agents right now that um, will not elaborate on the delay. They just say, we're just waiting for the lender. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and yeah. they don't say anything else. And there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. And I get it. They don't want follow up questions. They don't want to have to explain the process. But you know, honestly, it makes the lender, no regardless who it is, look like crap. And mm -hmm. um, and so that's why you know if as long as you guys know what the process is now if you're if you don't have any relationship with that with that lender like what if you're on the listing side and it is what it is you still now now if you remember this stuff you can ask the right questions and know that you're not being duped or you're just getting mm -hmm. you know you know a line and there's really a problem it just to, to me like knowing the why and what's happening, even if it's just on a basic level is, is really helpful. So yeah. 100%. Uh, yeah. Um, only other thing I wanted to say, mm. I was gonna, you know, talk about, you know, the woes of uh, offers getting declined left and right. But I guess the only thing I wanna say is if anybody's experiencing that, that they're not alone in the, their plight because I'm getting calls from I mean, I can't even tell you how many pre-approval letters I've written in the last, um, I don't know, month or so, you know, just for the offer to be declined. So um, I know I was talking to Greg yesterday and I haven't seen um, his, you know, many of his training classes, but he's got a lot of great things in place to, you know, have your offer stand out. Um, I've seen, I've seen, um, and you guys probably have seen this already too, but back to like the olden days where you write a, a letter to uh, the listing agent uh, with maybe even a picture of your, um, you know, your buyer and why this house is absolutely perfect for them and their backstory and, you know, just the heartstring type letter of, hey, this is why, this is the house that we've always dreamed of. We had this and that happen and blah, blah, blah. I mean, there's a couple people in your office now doing that they're sending du findings along with you know instead of just a regular pre-approval letter they're showing an official mortgage mm -hmm. approval yeah, that's and, your point, yeah and letters like with pictures of say firemen or police officers you know just um whatever that person's deal is i mean we really need to get creative um mm -hmm. on how to get these offers accepted and um you know it's it's a rat race so um, it is. Oh, yeah, it's really hard out there. I just want yeah. to tell you, you guys, a real quick story. We have a listing in Jupiter Farms for six six hundred eighty eight great sellers. Um, but the the funny thing is, you know, um, there was this family that came to see it, and they're really desperate for a house. And they brought their two girls, husband and wife. They stayed for like two hours while the sellers were down the street with their dogs. You know. And to me, it just seemed like they really needed to meet each other. I know that's weird, but like, so I called the seller. I said, Mike, can you, is there any way you can come down and maybe answer some of these questions that I wasn't aware of because we just took the listing and I wanted them to have the answers. So he came down with his wife and his daughter and honest to God, it was like old family day. You know, they, they're both from Italy in a certain section, like a certain town. So they had that bond. They had so many bonds, they knew people. It was, 
it was just really kind of nice, you know, to see. And they were like, no, we want these people in our house. So, you know, a lot of people now as realtors are like, oh, they don't care about that. It's all about the money and this and that. But honestly, when you can connect, make a connection like that, and we all get along with your, with the other realtor, which is so important now, you know, to just really make a bond with the other realtor that you're dealing with. You can do that. Even try to get the people together. I know it sounds weird, but you know, let them go off and do their own thing. And it's helped with this offer so much that, you know, they're both giving in on both sides. It's a, it's a really smooth, really nice transaction. And these people are so happy about the new buyer. So it just makes for a really great transaction if you could make that happen more often. I agree. I agree. And, and it has to be genuine because there are some agents I work with down South that, um, that, you know, they're new to the business and they, they know how to say all the right things. Um, but what you're describing DD is like authentic and it, and it has to be, it's like, you know, the way they connect it, it's not going to be, you know, let's put these two people in the room and see what happens. It's, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. it's got to be, you know, Italy, whatever, whatever that connection is. But yeah. I, I really believe that you're right. I think that it's just, you know, what I just said, we, we have to find ways to uh, get this offer accepted out of the one out of 20 that are on the table right now. Yeah, um, it, it's really funny moving forward just really quickly because, you know, I had brought up the kick out clause with these people because, you know, they do they do have a contract on their home um, and everything is has gone through the inspection, the appraisal, everything. And actually the buyers that are buying our, our listing, they have extended the closing only because they can't find a house, you know, so their buyers are fine and everything and they want to move in tomorrow, but they just needed a house for their family, you know? And so at this point I did present a kickout clause because it's just a brand new listing and with another, you know, house the buyer um, contingent on buyer's home. I just felt I just should present it to him anyways. Cause I didn't want him to ask me later why I didn't present it to him. So he said, you know, he thought about it for like a day. And then he said, you know, I honestly, I really like these people. They gave me over ask, well over asking price and I don't want to offend them. So it was, it's kind of nice when they could get to the point where they have feelings like, you know, let's do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Josh has something too. Yeah. No, what I was going to say is exactly what Didi said. I said, it, you know, the relationship between you and the other agents is extremely important. Everybody wants to be an asshole because they think they know more. Mm -hmm. And like you've seen mm -hmm. on Facebook about agents just saying, hey, I want to show this property. How, how do I access it? The rapport that you like when you do enough business, you tend to see the same people over and over either on the business or on the uh, buy side or the sales side or whatever. So if Dee Dee's an asshole every time she contacts me. I don't really want to get back to her. I don't really have that sense of urgency with her where if Greg comes in, he's nice all the time. I'm going to talk to Greg and, you know, ask him, Hey, how's it been? You know, how's golf, blah, 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 whatever. And those types of relationships are going to help you actually find other properties that might not be available. I have a network of agents that I am very, very close with that we all share stuff with. Hey, I got this. Or they call me, Hey, do you have this or whatever? And those are the types of relationships that are going to help you succeed. Because if you're just being a jerk off to everybody, you're right. not going to get anywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's right. the whole process. They could be that's assholes true. on their side, but you got to keep killing them with kindness as much as it sucks. You got to keep doing it because you want to keep that relationship open because that asshole agent that has all the listings, you're probably going to see them again. And they're going to mm -hmm. remember, okay, well, I was a jerk to Josh, but Josh was really nice right. to me and he brought a good buyer and the buyer was qualified and Lisa was great at lending and his whole team was on point, I'm going to want to work with him. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I mean, it really works in your favor. What do they say? You get more with honey than vinegar or something? Yeah. Yeah. Attract more bees with honey than vinegar. But it's because <laughs> I have this agent, Sibby, a lot. She's pretty well known um, at Keller Williams. And honestly, she's like the nicest agent. I would probably choose her if I weren't a realtor because I just love her to death. And she had a listing. So it's so nice to be able to have somebody like that that, you can go to because she's extremely seasoned and extremely, you know, successful. So she had a listing in um, um, Martinique and Greg and I had a listing, a townhome. 
And we were like, why isn't, you know, why isn't our listing selling? So it was really nice because she'd call me and say, did you see that one? Like, what's wrong? Can I see yours? And then I would see hers. And, you know, it, it was a really nice connection because she helped me a lot. And she actually was like, you know, Dee, Dee you should probably get rid of this or that. Just really nice criticism. And after, like, she told me a couple of things, I'm like, you know, you're right. I didn't even see it, you know? Yeah. And so she's working for another agency and helping me and then she's like well what can I do to mine and the, so it's really really nice to be able to knock things around with other people like that yeah I mean that aren't almost, in your circle yeah I mean they're all your peers so I mean you got to understand yeah. that like even when they're giving you pushback or you're trying to be the superhero agent which you should never be anyways but when you go into the house and you're asking certain questions that like such as what's the age of the roof the AC the water heater the way you ask those questions is really going to determine whether or not that other agent's really going to want to work with you. Because if you're coming in guns blazing and saying, well, what's the age of the roof? Oh, 2005. Oh, that's going to have to be replaced right there. I'm shutting right. down. Exactly. I don't want to deal with you. You're yeah. a jerk. So, yeah, we were actually discussing that yesterday on the listing is we see more buyers, agents nowadays coming in and dogging the house. Yes. Yeah. Instead of coming in and showing the bright side of it. And, you know, there's some agents that, let's be honest, are just door openers. They open the door, let the clients go through. Nowadays, that's a, kind of another way to reiterate on how to maybe get your offer accepted if the listing agent's there. And you're actually trying to sell the house as opposed to, you know, trying to just find everything that's wrong with it. And, you know, we've had listings where we see the buyer's agent come in, just dog the house. And you can actually tell from the buyers themselves that they're not super happy. They might have liked the house inside or whatever the case may be. And they're kind of getting down and depressed because their agent is just dogging the house and they're just trying to pick it apart. And it's, I think it's so ingrained in agents to do that, to try to be like, Hey, if we're going to work out an offer here, this, 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 and this is wrong. We need this fixed or we need this type of credit, but we need to all pivot in, in today's market. Uh, let's be honest the house that's over listed and overpriced, it's still probably going to sell for that price. So you guys as agents can't necessarily go in and just try to beat up a house if say, you know, the it's not the right tile or the roof is, you know, 10 or 15 years old instead of being five. It's just try to go in there and show the bright side of the house because that's what the buyers are looking for, you know? Yeah, the good points, because it actually happened to me yesterday with an agent I know really well, been around a long time, but she's she's a pain, honestly. Like she, I was dreading when showing it to her. So what does she do? She comes in, she feels around the skirt of the house. It's, you know, wood. And I'm like, you're not going to find anything there don't make your customer worry about that it's, there's nothing there she goes well I see the permit for the roof but I don't see the permit for the shed it went on and on and on and then I said it's there don't worry he's an engineer he's got his permits right so then she goes out to the water treatment area you know and she goes why is there an aerator do you have sulfur in your water that's really bad you should I mean it honestly I could go on and on it was like every single place part of the house we looked at she brought up and I'm like, what are you trying to do here? Kill the deal? Like, and the guy was standing next to me, like shaking his head, rolling his eyes. Like, I don't need to know. I want to hear good stuff. Yeah. You know, he didn't want to hear the bad things. And, you know, that's all going to be brought up and researched and inspection. Just get your person right. in there. Less is best, you know, just show them the good qualities and let them lead like that. Yeah. And if you're the listing agent, are you going to want to work if that agent comes in and presents an offer? Are you necessarily, regardless if it's if it's at your asking price or list price, or if it's over, you're gonna have some some thoughts in your head that hey, they were already dogging the house this much. They're probably gonna try to really hit us hard, at, you know, during the inspection process. So, you know, as listing agents, you gotta kind of think when you work with buyers, uh, you gotta kind of think also how would they react too. So, you know, by going in and doing that stuff, I mean, just try to find the good parts in the house. Is, you know, I get it. if you're walking into a house that needs to be torn down, it's one thing and or you can gauge that your buyer is just totally disinterested. It, you know, there everything requires you being alert and being being active in your job. But at the end of the day, you know, we're seeing it more often than not. Agents are just trying to dog everything to, to reduce the price. And let's be honest, nowadays it's not going to happen. In, in many cases, it doesn't work like that anymore. You know, and that's where us as agents need to pivot pivot your business model. You can't just go in and do what you you've known to do forever. Um, you know, you want to make them aware. Don't don't mistake us saying this for you know not not showing them or talking about material defects but like dd said i mean that is exactly what your inspection periods for you know that's exactly what all those time frames are for in due diligence periods so like you know you're not trying to hide stuff from them but you don't necessarily don't want to go in and say 
hey, the water system's old. Like, yeah, you're going to find that out on inspection. Like, it's not a huge deal. Like, and it was don't try to ruin the deal. Uh, try to sweeten it nowadays. Yeah, and she was very argumentative, yeah. you know, like every single thing she brought up, I had an answer, thank God. And then finally the seller came out and I'm like, so if you have any any other questions, here's your seller. And he was so patient, so nice answering. But afterwards he's like, I felt like I was being grilled and it was in front of the buyer, you know? So it was very, very uncomfortable. And even he said, when we went back in, gee, I hope she doesn't give me an offer. It's gonna be hell from now on dealing with her, you know? It's just not a good place, not a good place to be in, like, especially in this market. Mm -hmm. so, so do you have anything else, Lisa? No, I think um, I think that's it for now. Um, just anybody has any questions, needs me for anything, call me. We, and, um, um, Didi's got a question. Uh, just a quick question. Hi, honey. I just wanted to Hi. ask you, um, is it still like about 40 days out for the loan? Are you finding any relief or is it still, uh, you know, more than 30 days? Um, nothing has really changed from the last time we talked about this. Um, I'm 30 days, um, 35 days for closing. And the reason I want to add the extra five days is, is just because Sometimes, depending on where the property is, the appraisal is taking longer than two weeks. Um, yeah. Can't blame really COVID anymore. Um, it's mm -hmm. it's it's just that you know everybody the appraisers are so busy. Yeah. And yeah. Um, the panel that that I picked for like Martin, St. Lucie, Palm Beach County, it's all the the old appraiser horses like you know native Casey Mock and a lot of the veteran ones that have been around for a long time, they're very, very busy. So, you know, fortunately it's been taking about two weeks, um, but I have in some cases seen up to three weeks. And so that is where the delay is coming in. So, you know, if, if you're dealing with other lenders, like they're, they're being told from their operational people that a 60 day close is the industry norm. And it's, it's not. Um, and so you really, it just depends on who you're talking to. If you're looking, you're working with Bank of America or Wells Fargo, you know, try not to, but um, if you are, just don't do a 30 day, probably don't even do a 45 day. You just, mm -hmm. just allow extra time. But I can only speak for what's happening in my company right now. And we're, we're 30 days. Um, I like to do an honor before 35 only because, um, you know, just we have some wiggle room. Like if the appraiser says, hey, we have to have this uh, wood rot fixed or whatever, it just gives us a little extra time. But I also don't want, you know, the offers being turned down because the closing period, you know, closing date is too far out. So it's just a, you know, Fun balancing act of yeah. getting it all, you know, getting the offer accepted is like the main goal. And then pushing everything along as quickly as possible and getting the approval in the first, you know, two or three days of the loan, the actual mortgage approval, then we're working on conditions while the appraisal is being worked on. And it seems to be the most efficient way to do it right now with, you know, the appraisers being so busy. True. Um, I only have two things left. Um, number one, I'm sure everybody saw that we are good with the steward office now. Um, so home sales treasure coast finally got approved. We're actually going to be in, uh, yeah. in Lisa's office, which we're going to, you know, send out some more information. Um, see so address again, Lisa, four, eight, three, six Southeast railway. Yeah. Uh, so four, eight, three, six Southeast railway Ave in, uh, Stewart, uh, awesome, awesome location. If anybody knows where like twisted tuna and trippers is like that, that manatee <laughs> pocket in there, we're literally across the street. You're pulling out twisted tuna right across the street um we're in we're going to be starting renovations probably this week um just trying to get some flooring in there some paint some cool stuff desk we're gonna set it up basically like this office um so it's going to be able for you guys if you know you guys are down here you and you have buyers up there or listing up there you guys can shoot in the office leases there a lot uh, but we're going to set it up with the same alarm system and all that good stuff so you guys can in and out uh if need be um so, you know, still going to be that semi cloud office, which is what we're looking for. Um, awesome location. Yeah. So yeah, we're excited. We're, we're excited to uh, get that growing. Um, but I think we'll already have like eight or nine agents up there. Um, so yeah, we're excited. So if you guys the only, up there. The, 
the only thing about this place that if you're trying to like not eat too much or you're trying to lose weight, walking out of here and smelling King Neptunes and shrimpers <laughs> and twisted tuna and getting crabby, it's like fried fish and yeah. french fries it's it's not it's not easy <laughs> so lisa all our agents will be up there now because all like like the casey's you know all they're so, they're so social all you have to do is go sit at those you know manatee aisle shrimpers whatever and just <laughs> buy someone a drink and you got a listing well that's what i was thinking and then we have district table like yeah. you know a quarter mile up the road so if you really want to wine and dine you've got that right there too yeah yeah we're excited so we'll uh Hopefully have it have it completely open in the next, uh, I would say next two weeks, but we're all approved. And I mean, if somebody honestly, I don't think there's another desk up there right now, is there? But if somebody honestly wanted to pop in right now to, to do something, I mean, they totally could, you know, Lisa's usually there, just reach out to Lisa. But yeah, yeah, we're getting it all squared away, but um, yeah, good to go. So there's that. Um, and then just an update regarding uh, two other things is the medical insurance stuff. Um, I just did like a kind of a final test on it, a little beta test where I went out and actually applied um, to check rates and all that stuff. And rates were actually better than I actually personally thought they were going to be. Uh, so we're super excited that we're just kind of doing a beta for a family right now. Um, so with, with children and all that stuff to kind of see where that price point lines up. But at the end of the day, we're just trying to really the last set is to input that information into the portal that uh, Frank is actually building out, which we're have a meeting today to see the final product of the portal. So the portal is going to be rolling out uh, probably within the next week for beta as well. We're going to set up probably two, three, four, maybe five agents on the portal, give them, you know, their, their profile, they can set up their profile and play around with it. Uh, and then we're going to roll it out probably within the next three to four weeks to be hundred percent done. Um, so we're just trying to figure out as far as the medical insurance aspect of it, we're, uh, our medical insurance girl and Frank are working together to input a link and create a whole sub page basically for the medical insurance aspect on the portal. And then um, we should be good to go. So yeah, I would say probably within the next month, that'll be hundred percent secured, ready to go and, and on the portal. And, and that's when the portal should roll out full time. Like I said, we'll probably pull in some agents that are pretty active on, on the, you know, the programs that we offer and get them on the portal first and do a beta probably by the end of this week. Uh, we're hoping if not it's going to be early early next week so uh we'll, we'll reach out for that but just want to give an update regarding that um any questions you guys know just reach out at any time we're always always here dd or myself to help you guys out um what's up anything and i just wanted to say um you know i'm sorry about the last couple weeks that we weren't able to have the meeting and i'm sorry that this meeting is actually way longer than it usually is so thanks for your patience <laughs> um so if anybody has any questions could i ask one question absolutely tool okay um being very new to this i just would like to have some clarification on where um a buyer privately approaches a seller prior to being on MLS and having a listing agent. And then that offer is too low for the seller privately. And the seller says, well, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna list it and see what the market bears for that. And I'm just curious because I'm in a situation where, you know, I might have another buyer does, and then let's just say they put in an offer and that listing agent is going to approach the seller and say, well, I have an offer for this much. So now that seller knows that they have an offer, but can they go privately back to that person that approached them without a listing agent being involved and say, well, look, now I got an offer for so much. Uh, what do you want to do? Does uh, that happen? Yeah. I mean, technically, if there's no agreements, if there's no listing agreement between the seller and the listing agent, then yeah. They can technically well, no, no. Once it is on MLS, I'm saying so now the seller says, No, your offer is too low. I'm gonna put it on MLS with a listing agent. So mm -hmm. now it's officially on yeah. you know flex MLS. Uh, yeah. So now that private owner who offered a, a low, well, you mm -hmm. know, figure uh waits and hears from the seller because the seller's gonna say, Hey, listen, uh Sally, I just got an offer for 130. 
um, you know, what do you want to do? So is, are they obligated to pay anybody any commission or can she just go without being involved with a realtor is I guess. Uh, my no, question. I mean, being that it's on the MLS, it is, it's whatever's in that listing agreement that the buyer or the listing agent and the seller have together is what's going to be paid out. So if you're, if you're the agent for your buyer and you make that known, then you are owed whatever that listing agreement is, is, you know, dictates. But I'm, I'm so. talking about, I guess I didn't clear myself that there's another buyer somewhere that approached this person before and said, hey, you know, I'd like to buy your place for 100,000. So they have a previous relationship. Just a relationship, but nothing mm -hmm. through any realtors. Well, I mean, technically, yeah, then then you wouldn't, you as Tula wouldn't be owed a commission unless you have, in, unless you come up and you write the offer. So if you write up the offer, that's one thing, then you're owed the commission. But if they negotiate between themselves and it's on market, on, but it's you private. You offer or anything. But it's private. You're the buyer's agent in this case. You're talking, right? Um, no, that I'm. I'm. I'm not. It's another person that came, approached them prior to listing it, and saying, "Hey, I'll give you a hundred thousand for it." And she says, "No, that's too low. I'm going to list it with an agent. I'm going to mm -hmm. go to a realtor." So now it gets listed. It's on on MLS. And let's just say I do have a buyer, but I, I haven't got that down pat yet. But if one should have, you know, come up, then the listing agent is obviously going to approach their seller and say, I have this offer. And then, you know, the seller is going to say, well, call the friend up who did it privately and say, well, listen, I got it on MLS and now I got an offer for 30,000 more than you were going to offer. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to come up in your price? So where does that leave, fine. you know, them? That's that fine. private I mean, buyer can, and the yeah, private that, seller. I mean, that's fine. They can go back and forth and create a bidding war is basically what I'm gathering is what you're offering is, are they allowed to go back and say, Hey, here's a deal. We have received another offer for this much. Are you willing to come up? Right. But there, then, there's no but, issues with that. But then that listing agent doesn't have anything to do with it anymore. Oh. No, because no, they a still private have a thing. Yeah, it's on MLS now. So they have a binding listing agreement with the broker and, and, and the seller. Right. But that particular person never approached the listing. You know, it was never. Yeah, but once you once you sign, like, OK, she can do whatever. So if you have a seller and then she has two different buyers or, or a single buyer, they can do whatever they want amongst themselves. You can even okay. bring a buyer to her if it's not listed on the MLS. And the only thing you do is you create a commission uh, commission right. agreement. Okay. That way you're, you're legally, you know, getting paid. Now, yes. as soon as that property hits the market and go, it has a listing agreement, it doesn't even have, to, well, nowadays it does, but you can just have a listing agreement. That's between the brokerage and the seller. Yeah. Once you're moving forward and, and that date on the listing agreement is, you know, April 1st, and then it's April 1st, then they're legally obliged to do whatever that listing agreement says. So, if they had a previous private buyer and they yeah. went to that previous private buyer and said, Hey, guess what? Now I'll take this for the house. They still have the seller still has to pay out commission to the agent. Oh, gotcha. So that listing agent will still, even though that listing agent had nothing to do with that private buyer. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Yeah, they're legally obliged because of the, the listing agreement between the broker and the seller. So once you, once you execute that broker and the seller, the broker and the seller execute the listing agreement, that's what that listing agreement is. And that's kind of like reverting back to earlier in the meeting where we we're talking about like conditional, unconditional. If she even decided to say, hey, guess what? I have my own buyer. I'm going to cancel the listing agreement. You as the listing agent can come to us as the broker. We can say, well, here's the deal. Just because you procured your own seller doesn't mean we can't get paid commission anymore. We gotcha. marketed the property, did this, this, and this. So at that point, like Didi said, it's situational dependent we could say, okay, cool. You can just get rid of that listing agreement unconditionally. Everybody walks their own way or, Hey, you pay a $500 cancellation fee or whatever you want to charge them. If you spent money doing videos and drone and all this, or no, Hey, you still have to pay us the commission at the end of the day. Uh, that's right. what was, that's what's legally obligated for the contract. And, and, and uh, on another situation uh, for being a listing agent, uh, I'm my my spiel is basically it's a six month contract. I mean that's the lowest I would agree to, I think. And they're going, oh no, I only want it for a month. And I'm going, oh no, we do it for six months, you know. Mm -hmm. And now this three percent that I did before from both sides, 
oh no, I'm not paying that. I'm going, well, you know, I'm new at this and this is what I'm doing. So I'm trying to, you know, just to get it, uh, I'll go down to two and a half percent, but that's what they they basically are going for now. So it's like, yeah, I mean, it's every situation is different. Every seller is different. I mean, we have some agents that are, that are doing, I mean, we just had an agent do a 10% on a commercial property. So yeah, on a million yeah. dollar property, they get a hundred thousand dollar commission. There's some agents that are doing that every now and then have to do a 4% for, you know, a, a family member or a friend or a good right. friend or whatever the case may be. And like I said, it's case dependent. That's where you come to us and, and say, Hey, like, I'm going to lose this listing if I don't do a 5% total, you know, price you know, commission, um, that's fine. Like we have no issues with that, like five plus range, but once you get under five, yeah. you just really come to us and say, Hey, Greg, like, what can we do? I'm going to lose a list. If I don't do this and this, like I said, it's case dependent. We can maybe work something out. Um, but like you guys, as the listing agents, if you're in that situation, you, you need to show your value to them. So, right. you know, we just did like a for sale by owner that actually just came to us and approached us and it was showing him the value of time was really, yes, exactly. it, it was, for him, that was the biggest thing. It was, yeah. hey, you're not going to, he was busy. He was moving up north. So like right. he didn't want the hassle of dealing with contracts, dealing with showings, dealing with negotiations, dealing with this, dealing with that. Um, the fact of having an attorney like that he would normally have to pay for to write up the contract and do all this stuff. Uh, for him, it was a time saver. Some people, it's purely money. Some people, it's, yeah. hey, I'm, I'll do 4%. If not, it's I'm not doing anything. I'll sell it myself. Some, it's just every situation is different. You just kind of need to, to, really feel the situation, but it's really trying to show them your value as opposed to sell them by themselves or your value as opposed to another agent. Uh, I mean, little things nowadays, honestly, it's like weird, but Hey, I'll, I'll go show the property. Now, if you're busy and you, in the properties in Fort Lauderdale, you're not going to go down there for every showing. Right. So don't offer them something you can't perform at. Right. So in the right, same right. breath. Like if, if you have a listing in your community, Hey, I live in this community. I'm going to be here for every show. I'm going to make sure people are going in and out, especially if they're still residing in the property. Right. Um, I mean, even if they're not, because you don't want them stealing stuff. So like at the end of the day, it's little value adders like that is what's going to differentiate yourself and being able to show them the tools you can do. I'm going to create a property website for your house, whether it's $80,000 yes. or $8 million. Like I'm going to do the other things that agents aren't going to do, you know, and I can do it for the same price or I'm even going to do it for a little bit higher because I'm adding that value that other agents aren't doing. But like I said, every seller is different. It, you're going to have a sellers that just care about the money aspect of it. And they'll go with another agent that could be shady for say 500 bucks or a thousand bucks. At that point, in, in my honest opinion, and it's hard when you're new because you want as many deals as you can get, but you, you'll realize like, hey, there's some people that just aren't worth working for. If they're going to be that type of person in the beginning, it's going to get, trust me, it's going to get even worse once you get in the transaction because it's an emotional process for them. So okay. you, you got to kind of think on the outside of it, like, hey, if this person is like him and Han over $500, uh, yeah. in a transaction of this size, then it's going to be, it's going to be a headache going forward. And as a new agent, it's tough to kind of say no sometimes, or even say, Hey, this is my price and this is why I'm doing it. Sorry. That's where we're at. Uh, it, it's tough to do that, but you just got to realize that that's your value. It's worth it. Of, of course. So, so what's my quick answer when someone says, Oh, I, but too, I only want it for a month. Like, well, a month is not going to cut it. Yeah, I mean, and the, those are, that right there is kind of. You, know, close. Like you got it on MLS. Yeah, you just don't understand the process. Like, you just have to explain what you're going to do to market the property, photos, like yeah. professional photos, videos, drones, all this stuff. Like, you're going to say it's not worth it for us to list it for one month at that, at that. Go ahead. Could I just also say with people like that, most sellers are reasonable and they understand and appreciate your experience if you let them know, and yeah. they have no problem doing a six month, honest to God, like 90% have no problem. They understand. But with okay. sellers like that, if I wanted, which I probably would not want her listing because to me, she's in the category of a coupon exactly. lady. So what yeah. I would do in a case like that, if I was desperate and I really just wanted listing to use for, you know, yeah. advertising and mailings and things like this, right. marketing, I would go in and not everybody would agree or think this is right. But what I have done and it works every time is I say, no, it's our company policy that we have to do a six month listing, but, but you are welcome to cancel at any time. They sign immediately when they think they can cancel unbeknownst to them 
they can yeah. cancel on the MLS. They just can't cancel the listing agreement. I got it. Yeah. So if so, if I'm de- if I'm dealing with a normal nice person, I will say, look, I'll disclose. You can cancel at any time. However, you if you yep. sell it on even a FISBO, you still owe the brokerage your yes. five, six, whatever percent is on the listing agreement. If they're okay. nasty people, I hate to say it, they're out there. I will always say we the brokerage and every other brokerage you're going to deal with, especially on Illustrated or Keller Williams or what have you, is going to demand the same thing. However, if you would like to cancel, you can at any time. You can even write that in this special you know, comments. Uh-huh. You can cancel at any time, but it does not necessarily take you off the you know, commit. So that works every single time. And in that case also, I would put a cancellation fee. Okay. Oh, okay. But you just cancel the MLS or you cancel You cancel only on the MLS. Because but don't you have to tell them? Don't you have to you know, no, you know why? Because they're responsible to read every single thing what they sign. It's not our responsibility. We're not attorneys. We present the contract. Look, we'll go over it with you. We'll answer any questions. But, but we are shouldn't you use that nomenclature? We'll cancel the MLS. Yeah. Nope. That's because then you can if you want. So but we have to put warnings on copy that it's on. Right. I mean, what's the point? Tell them to read it. Tell Just them. tell them to read it. They need it. It's if their they have any questions, obligation. you're happy to answer right. them. Like, I, it's not for yeah. us to guide them right. through and, and hold their hand on right. every single bird. Right. And Tula, the other, the other thing too, though, is and like just like Josh said, but the the other thing too is normally when you have somebody that's worried about the time frame of a of a contract, is they're worried about the process in general to start. So maybe they don't know the process, or they haven't sold a house in ten or fifteen or twenty years. They they're just uncomfortable with the process. They say, hey, let's test this out. Let's test the waters. Or you could have somebody that just maybe, hey, let's test it. Let's overprice it. Maybe I'll get what I want. If I don't in a month, I'll take it off the market and not sell it. So everything's different, but. Generally, like I think I've had maybe one or two or seen one or two situations where somebody says, hey, I want to cancel. I only want a month listing and an agent does get the listing for three months or six months or a year, whatever the case may be. And then they never rarely do we see them actually cancel once they're in the process and the agents walk them through the process and see how it is. And let's be honest, in today's market uh, there, you may not even need it for a month in today's market, but it could be in a month. So you're not really seeing people even when they're nervous like that, once they get in the process, they get a little more comfortable, they get comfortable with everything, you as the agent, you, you know, the process itself, and then we're not seeing them cancel. You know, we see it all the time where buyers are, or excuse me, sellers are a little hesitant to sign a six month listing agreement. Once they do, they're totally fine. They're, they're comfortable in the, in the transaction. Um, so we, I think we've had one or two in the whole office I've seen in the past three years that have actually wanted to cancel, you know, prior to that listing agreement expiring. Right. If I may. Yeah. That, well, thank you. Yep. One, one more caveat there. So with Greg's permission, so, but this is what I would do. I would tell them, obviously, go back to the value and under, let, make sure they understand the value of the listing. It's, it's a, a one month of shit. We're not going to get very far with that. Mm-hmm. But two, if you're adamant on canceling, then in the additional terms, as Didi said, I put specific dates upon written notification on this date by this time seller may conditionally you know uh release themselves from this contract in terms of just getting off mls so if it's october 1st by 5 p.m and then october 2nd at 12 o'clock they decide to cancel they have to wait till their next contract date that's in there so that's how you get around the person that's like i want a four or six or an eight month listing you write it for a year, give them conditional releases on those specific okay. dates with timelines. So when they miss it. Do you put notice in there? 30 days notice or 10 days? Or oh, yeah, you would want it. Well, no, no, you don't. No, because you want it on that date. Now, if they give it to you prior to, then of course you obligate. But if they're they're sitting there because then, you know, they're thinking, okay, if they put a reminder, oh, in 10 days, I can cancel. No, fuck that. Cancel on October 1st, and then we'll let you out. And if they miss October 1st, their next cancellation is not until December 1st, well, we're, we're ripping and running still. Mm-hmm. Right. Sure they, like if they're getting traction, like Greg said, people are getting people in the house, offers are coming in, things are happening, they're tasting the money, they're spent the money already that they don't have, they're not going anywhere. Yeah. Don't they, be desperate. Don't be no, desperate. I, I don't want to be desperate. I mean... Well, taking a one-month listing with all yeah. due respect, it, it shows a little oh, bit no. of desperation because they, they you know... 
And just saying oh, no. you want to get it just to get it, it's it's not gonna it's she, not gonna help she, your situation. I don't think she's gonna take it. Yeah. She wants oh to know no what to way. Say. Yeah. She just tell them. Just, just add the value. Say, listen, you know, we put time and effort behind the scenes in this. I schedule a photographer. I do the yeah the, the photo. website. There's marketing. There's there's this. There's that. There's paperwork. There's blah 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 blah. And by the time somebody sits back and hears all that, they're like, oh okay, yeah, they I would know, see right? why you don't want to do that for a moment. Right. Wait till they start you know, showing just, it. You know, just so I don't choke them. You know, I need something nice to say. Well, <laughs> she's too nice. Yeah, you want to be honest. You want to be honest before you're nice. You want to do it yeah. cordially, but you want to be honest. Yeah. You set real, real, realistic expectations. Not that this yeah. is pertinent to this, but I used to be a corrections officer. So when I went to the pod every single day, I would tell them, "Hey, this is how it's going to go down, and if it doesn't go down this way, this is what's going to happen." So I set my expectations early on, first and foremost, every yeah. single day. Every, yeah. So the same. <laughs> so the same way, when you approach the seller, set those expectations. Be the leader, you know, and, and yeah. let them know, hey, this is how it's going to go, and this is why, and and it'll get you get you very far. <laughs> right. So right. good, good question, Tula. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. You bet. I got a question relative to the group, but I got two others that probably aren't. Um, do you have anything? Do uh, you because this is as a as a new agent, a struggling new agent. Do you have anything that says the features and benefits of home sales by Palm Beach of home sales Palm Beaches? Ah, uh, we should because, I think, right? You know, I'm dancing but, because people are like, well, they don't ask you. They usually don't come out and say, well, how long have you been doing this? Mm -hmm. And my, but they'll. You just say a long time, forever. I usually say, well, I, 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 I bought my first property 20 years ago or something like that. Right. Then, I've been in real estate for 20 years. Right. Perfect. Or something like that. I yes. work around that. It's like if you don't graduate from college, well, right. I, I got out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> do you have anything like that? Do you, uh, just you mean in writing or something when you're just, sitting with them? I, well, I don't need, I just need something to reference to be able to say, Hey, this company. We offer this. We offer this. We offer this. Which are benefits and maybe why? Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Why home sales? Right. Matches. Yeah. So we don't have anything in writing just because you they should know what it. we offer. They don't read it. Like, like, yeah, they're not going to read it. Number one. Then number two. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, they're not going to read it. And then number two is like just learning what we offer as far as like all the website stuff in chat. So you being able to, because if you give them something to write, number one, they're not going to read it. And then number two, they're going to think that you're just handing something. You don't, maybe right. you I'm really don't know. Hand up. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, talking. it's number one, it's going to be whatever you want to do as an agent. So, hey, if you want to do okay. professional photography, which hundred percent you should, I don't care if it's an $80,000 condo or not. Right. Granted, there's some of them, there, there's certain, 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 but it's up to you as the agent too. So like, hey, I'm going to offer professional photography. The next step too, I'm also gonna do for digital markets, I'm gonna do a video. So I'm gonna get my photographer to do a video. Like we're gonna do a walkthrough tour, the whole nine yards right now. Media. If you don't wanna do that, you don't have to obviously, right. but it never hurts because the more you can value as that seller. Like just make a list of different things that I decide yeah. where I could offer. Yeah, so you know, like Chime things. has the property websites. Like, right. like we were telling Tula, like, hey, guess what? If I go, if you're at $150,000 listing appointment or talking to the seller or mm -hmm. whatever, like, Hey, this this company so and so and so is not going to make you a website for your hundred fifty thousand dollars house. I'm going to do it for free for you. And guess what? That's going to go out to our database of four thousand people that we have within the office. So regardless of being, because sometimes this happens, this happens less than people think. But you'll get the well. If I go to like a Keller, there's a nationwide presence, right? So hey, we're members at all the local MLSs, which have capabilities to reach out to international buyers. So our listings get pulled in through JTHS, especially to international buyers. Everybody's listings in the office. So, hey, your listing is going to be pushed out to all the international buyers on all the international MLSs. We're going to do, you know, if you want to do print brochures for them, you can, obviously, that's up to the agent. So if you're like, hey, it's a great listing, I'm going to do print brochures because guess what? Not only does it look good for you, for the seller, but you may get another listing from it too. Mm -hmm. So whatever you want to do as far as like, so I need to like, with that on my own. I'm the yeah, because kind of I mean, because anything's possible. Right. I mean, you could create a uh, inflaming, right. inflatable waving man in front of the house, right? Well, that's but perfect. that's up to the <laughs> it's up to the the agent for those specific things. So like you know what the office offers, right? So mm -hmm. you got like every agent knows. Okay, this is cool. This is what the offer is going to offer with what I get for the agent. So like, that's our job is to provide the right tools for you guys right. to be able to then go to your sellers and buyers and be like, hey, this is what we're going to do. 
other things like a lot of people don't know that the, a lot of the MLSs do go out to international buyers. I've that had I've had one or two instances where sellers are like, well, if I go to KW, they're all over the world. Like, I'll get a better buyer pool. And it's like well, you don't really because nowadays everything links up. So like MLS is linked up with every MLS. Everything, so everything. It, it doesn't matter if they're where you're at. So like you can kind of kick back to them and say. Like, here's the deal. Like, everything goes to everywhere. Everything populates everywhere. The second I put your home on MLS, it's going to go to Zillow. It's going to go to Realtor.com. It's going to go to Redfin. It's going to go to Same all place. those that populate Those's everywhere right. else, right? So, yeah, we may not have 10,000 agents to call and go, hey, I got a listing here and there, but it's the same exact thing. So, could I just tell you what works for me really well? Mm -hmm. It's the basics. It's the basics. So, the first thing I say when I'm on a listing is, I will be the realtor to answer your phone when you call me mm -hmm. and you need questions. I mm -hmm. will have the patience to answer every single question mm -hmm. you have. I will go over anything contractual with you. Um, the photos. Yeah, the TV, but right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So uh, another thing too, like <laughs> okay, the, go ahead, the, TV. the <laughs> transaction fee is the lowest you will pay out of any corporation um, that a bigger corporation. So the smaller boutique is really some good benefits because we have three you know, title companies with attorneys that are in-house that will give probably a, a little bit of discount on your um, title company, not like Pat Reef with Keller Williams that will charge a thousand more, you know, or things like that. So the fees, the money, you know, it's like our affiliates will help you because we're a smaller boutique. Everything gets out from the MLS. We have just as much opportunity to sell your property on, on that as Keller or Illustrator or Douglas Elliman or anywhere. It's all the same. They mm -hmm. all get it. And um, so with, you know, the titles and the transaction fees are low and, you know, uh, it's just basically working on yourself. Like once you start rattling off, they're sold. They're yeah. Sold. So like, Sean, are you still on? Let's see if Sean goes. Yes, sir. Hey, buddy. How are you? Good, so, man. How are you? Good, man. So Sean can kind of reiterate this. Um, and this was Sean and I went down to a listing appointment last Monday together. Um, just the, no splitting of listings or anything like that it was just i wanted to go down and help support him it was on a big commercial property that he's about to list so we just kind of want to show support so number one we're always here for stuff like that number one number two like what i witnessed was the guy literally told sean that day can you send me a listing agreement asap i want to sign right now granted we're not all that lucky to have sellers like that some you know a lot of them want to think about it stuff like that but this guy knew what his number was his number was not unrealistic so we agreed to his number. The personality aspect of it is what won Sean that listing. So like everybody that's with us, you, Josh, everybody's personal, right? So that's like your number one nowadays is create a relationship because Sean didn't really have much of a prior relationship with this guy, He's known him for a little bit, but him going in and just being nice, not BSing, but he just that personal aspect, like sitting back and watching it, that's what won him the listing. Mm -hmm. And that's what actually made the guy was like, here's the deal. Like I did actually interview other brokers before this. And he's like, I'm going to have to make the awkward call, tell him I'm going with someone else. But like, let's just list this thing because I like you guys. Like, right. and, and granted, that doesn't always happen. I'm not going to say that yes, always so. happens, but that is one thing nowadays. Like a lot of agents are like, Hey, how do I set myself apart? Be personal, like chat with the guy. I mean, Sean and I sat in one of his hotel rooms for freaking what 30 minutes, Sean, and just asked him where he's going, what he's doing, what he's looking to do in the future. Like, Granted, we're not involved in that because he's moving mm -hmm. to another state. But at the end of the day, Sean was asked some questions that pertain to him and his personal life and kind of broke down that barrier. And that's mm -hmm. that's what won him the list. Yeah. People so, want to tell their story. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I really think that it, especially right now, there there are so many realtors out there. Oh, at the end of the day, if they like you as a person, I mean, the chances of them going with you, I think, are much better than trying to say all these different things that you could do as a realtor, because at the end of the day, that's what yeah. everyone's doing. Yeah. That's what How yeah. you stand out. Yeah. hundred percent. It's and whose marketing plan can, can be better than the next, but that's not what it's about. They have to like you. You have to act interested in their life and act like you're a person with a heart, yeah. not just yeah. some other realtor. The reality of this business is not about selling property. It's about making connections. Mm -hmm. You know, and not, not, not a lot of you know my how I started, but right. so like I made a connection with a guy whose mother in law is a realtor who I sold a fifty thousand dollar property to. The only property I ever sold in my first year, which I made seven thousand dollars my first year in real estate. And since then, I've sold that guy forty properties. I managed all his properties. He does 
hundred thousand dollars minimum a year in commission for me for the last several years, just off of him. But that's not because he thought my marketing was great. Right. It's not because he liked the way that I could present his properties. It's because we have a connection. Right. In a solid connection to where he could easily throw me under the bus and go to his mother-in-law and do the same shit, just not at the same level. Well, and there's a trust factor there at this point. That's mm-hmm. number that's one. The, yeah, that's which was, what I'm getting at. Yeah, which was, you know, so, you know, the smoke and mirror is what you could do for them. Anybody could say yeah. anything. Mm-hmm. And half of them don't follow through anyway. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be whether or not they're going to make that genuine connection with you mm-hmm. to like you to say, hey, I trust you enough to take it. It really is about personality. And it's the first two minutes of the meeting and the listing that they know whether they like yeah. you or not. You can tell their eyes start to wander or they're very interested in what you have to say. You know, Sean, did you have something else? I did real quick while I'm on here. Um, I just listed a home it's a coming soon in lake worth beach so everyone tell your buyers i got a five bedroom four and a half bath down here so beautiful and you got a hotel coming on market yeah i have a, a 17 unit motel that should be listed within the week what's cool. the price that one's gonna be three right yep and the house is mm-hmm. what? what's the house 119 or something one two the, the house is 1.199 1.199 how much is the motel? Three. So what? what's, well, I'll call you on it, but is the hotel set up like a hotel motel or is it set up like uh, short-term rentals or what? Yeah, it's it's more, it's like a motel. It's, uh and, and yeah, it's like, he does a lot of short terms, right, Sean? Yep, exactly. Yeah. Where is it? Lake Worth Beach on Federal. We're looking at it. So yeah, it's 17 units, right? He discussed that actually the properties, because that's the one I went down to, to meet Sean at. The property's gorgeous. Like, I was, I was very impressed. Like all so seventeen units impact windows. Like, huh? is his name Larry? No, no. Um, Gord. I mean, I've never seen like grounds like that beautiful. It was, no, yeah. No. It was. I was really impressed actually. Like upgrade? Yeah. So if, if anyone who's listening does does have any questions on either property, please feel free to reach out. Awesome. So that's Sean. We'll uh, we'll throw his number yeah, out there. And good for you, Sean. Congratulations. That's really hustling. Thank you. So, well, that's all we got for now. We're done boring, you guys. We'll, uh, any <laughs> questions? But, but it's not necessarily for a group. Yeah. I don't know. Is it okay? Yeah, shoot them off. Yeah. Well, one is so, what I've been working on is um, trying to identify prospective listings. Mm-hmm. So, like I went to the property assessor, and well, in my neighborhood, there's with I live in Johnson's Lane, so there's in my neighborhood there's a house that has been occupied for three years. Woman mm-hmm. in Michigan owns it. I'm gonna reach. I figured out who she Good. was. I got her. Yeah. Just got her address. I'm gonna reach out to her and and see if she's interested in moving her. Plus, I've got some other people who I well one. It's not you're not. I mean, sometimes you're dealing with sad situations like this. One woman is is mentally incapacitated mm-hmm. in another property and. I rent to the neighbors next door and the neighbors I've got a relationship with her and I'm working on getting that listing. And I know her, Molly, but she doesn't. So in talk, in, in going after the, I mean, what, what, when you've obviously been in situations like that, where you know, it's coming, you just want to be the person who gets the listing. Right, right. right exactly. So what are things that you would do in those regards in terms of just. Honestly, for me, and they'll reiterate, or, or they'll, they'll tell you what they do. Cause we probably all do things a little bit differently. For me, the first thing I would do is just that personal relationship, stay in front of her because the, the biggest thing nowadays is like, you got to stay in front of them because All the time. there's other realtors that are doing now. Don't get yeah. me wrong. There's other realtors that there's a lot of realtors that aren't doing what you're doing. You're putting in good, hard work. That's awesome. Cause a lot of realtors don't, they want stuff to come easy to them. So you're already getting out a lot of realtors out of the way right there. But then number two, you're going to have a batch of realtors that do are doing the same thing you're doing. Number two is staying in front of them. Just just uh, Sean Hewley, yeah. um, just stay in front of her. Because if you go a month without talking to her or two months or whatever, you go a gap without talking to her, she will forget. She will. She will. And, and we've had, it sucks to say, but we've had friends forget about us as realtors. We've had family, like distant family. So just because you're like, hey, cool. I talked to her once. I talked to her twice. I talked to her three times. Stay just for me, stay in front of her on situations like that. Because t- there'll be agents that reach out to her. They'll get there. I'm Guarantee you in Jonathan's Lane, there's mailers going out for realtors all the time. Oh, yeah. She could be, it could be day day one that she wants to say she'll wake up. Today's the day I want to sell the house. Oh, cool. Look, a mailer from uh, Joe Blow, the realtor. 
and then she just calls yeah. Joe Blow the realtor. It happens all the time. So that's what I would do. Bill. So is this the for just for an example? She's from Michigan. So I wouldn't, I would find her number, Google and find her number. And I got her address on the phone over here. Well, Google it. You can get it. Get her phone number, call her ASAP. I it just is nothing like a direct connection, you know. So that's personally what I would do. I mm -hmm. do a lot of Zillow for sale by owners. I we call them and expireds mm -hmm. in my free time. But there's nothing like actually getting a voice on the phone yeah. and saying, I like, I, you know, hey, I live here. You're perfect. You should get that listing and tell her how much, like we were talking dang, today, dang, Josh, dang. you need to tell her, I need to sell your house because I live right there. There's nobody that knows it more than I do. Just really brag on yourself at yeah. that point. Right, Josh? I agree. What's your favorite store? Shopping, pick up something, whatever it is. What store do you go to? Like, what do you mean? Buy ask her that? No, I'm asking you that. What store do I go to? Yeah, where do you I don't mean? shop that much. Right, go ahead. I don't if either. You shop somewhere. Yeah. To buy a shirt. All right. A golf shirt or a something. Shirt, right? Yeah. What are right. your hobbies? Von Mar. Okay. So you walk into Von Mar. I'm the salesman. I come up to you and I say, hey, how's it going? It's the first thing you're going to say to me. Just looking. Not interested. Don't want to hear you it. Push <laughs> back. Whatever. Yeah. Greg calls or comes over, says the same thing, and you give him the same shit. Didi comes over and says, man, that's a nice shirt. Where did you get that? that now so your nice. guard is awesome. automatically yeah. right. let go and you're engaging with Didi into a conversation to where she knows it's going to lead to a sale. Right. Well, Greg and I are sitting over here being pissed off at ourselves because we didn't make the connection with you, which led to the sale. Right. So what I'm getting at is when you call this person or send this person a nice letter or an email or what, smoke signal, whatever you're going to do, Morse code, it has to be something other than I, I want to sell, sell your, your house. house. Mm -hmm. Because everybody On in the freaking paper, world with a real estate like, license wants to sell her freaking exactly. house. But nobody gives a shit about it other than the commission. Mm -hmm. So as Didi's point, the value, why would I want to use you? I'm your neighbor. I have a vested interest here, right. not only in this community, but in your property and getting the top dollar for you and being your eyes on the ground while you're not here while you're away in Michigan mm -hmm. and right? yeah and that's the most important thing is I'm here I can so, check on your place you know, I'm here god forbid something goes wrong okay I had a property that flooded the day before closing well, guess what we didn't do we didn't close my mistake I fucked up I should have went to the house and looked at it more but I didn't so in your case you could say that hey you know agent who's not here or maybe not in the community it's not going to be checking on your property mm -hmm. as much where i'm right next door i can come over and check right. on it mm -hmm. at a moment's notice whatever so what i'm getting at is exactly what these two just said it, you got to make the connection you got to make and also get just sales out of your head with your shirt analogy right. which is really awesome the first thing i probably would say is i i'd go to the property and find out something nice and yep. i would say Hey, I'm your neighbor. I just want to let you know those flowers, look great. the flowers in front are blooming. They're yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. You know That's what? Good idea. I would love to see the inside of your home yeah. because it's, if it's as nice as it is outside, I mean, that's killer. She hasn't been in it for years. <laughs> oh my goodness. You should see all the trees have grown up so much. And so place you know that, you know, the negative side of right. everything. And now we need to focus on the that's positive right. side. Because the fact that God that's forbid crazy. something's wrong with her that she hasn't been able to get well, that's here another years, scary thing. right. Mm -hmm. So then you want to say, you know, listen, I, you know, I know for whatever reason you might not have been down in a little while. You know, but the place is still looking very good. I walk by it every day. I still see it. Blah blah blah. You know, your roof's intact. Whatever the case may be. <laughs> Just give her some good information yeah, that makes her that's happy. That's, that's, that's really good. Happy. That's really good yeah. idea. Because I walk by this yeah. house see? almost every day. You do it anyways. Mm -hmm. But you're walking cool. by it. With the intention of saying, man, I'm chomping at the bit to sell it. Yeah. You got to chomp at the bit to make the connection. Right. Yeah. And it's if you don't get this listing from this person, chances are she'll like you enough to say, well, this guy was so nice. Let me give him a chance because I'm coming back to Florida. Or maybe she's not. Or maybe she knows somebody or whatever. Yeah, I just noticed that she got moved. She moved it into a trust, her own trust. But I don't know. Uh, anyway, it's because I was talking to neighbors who said, hey, I actually w wanted to. Move, I would like to live in that neighborhood myself. So it was kind of like, kind of curious. You got to be on the on the uh, mindset is that every phone call that they get, they understand it's a sales call. Right. Mm -hmm. And you right. have to make it a non-sales call. They're going to put up a wall. 
So yeah. it's going to be a neighbor, a friend. That's really a good idea. Right? I, mean, I could take yes. a picture. Absolutely, even better. Yeah. Yeah. And because it yeah. doesn't look like it's unoccupied, so you must have somebody. But right. If you look through the bushes, which I did to the back, like shit's starting to rot. And, she you might know. want me to know that maybe because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that have people, other people take care of their properties, like landscape companies, whatever, and they don't know. They haven't been there. Well, and probably they, the the landscaper is probably. Yeah, everything. Right. But, yeah, but they the, do home watch, and it's yeah. Right. I, I looked at it. Right. Yeah. But she would maybe be, think it's okay until she had someone like you to tell her, "Look, this is off, and this is off," and then she'd become, become concerned, like, "Well, you're the only one that's telling me this, so I trust you." You know, yeah. it's it's just yeah. Make a make definitely make a bond, like Josh said. It pick something out. I mean, I would definitely call her though. You know, because once. You Thank start you. acting caring to her and like, look, I'm here to help you. And, you know, um, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to help you and keep you posted on your property. And I would love to, I'd love to see the inside if I could get a key. And once you do that, once you get in the door, it's usually. Right. You change the lock so I only have the key and then they yeah. can close the <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, so, okay. So it, if you, if you're doing a mailing, in an area like if I did a mailing in Jonathan's Landing, for instance, which they're are fucking gazillion, mm -hmm. gazillion, gazillion. I found out my neighbor who's who's involved in the HOA is a real estate agent. I was like, Damn. I thought it was the only one on the street. Anyway, um, <laughs> don't tell me it's Susan Holt. No, it's, <laughs> um, I can't remember her name right now. But um, so if I was going to do a mailing, I've got an idea for a mailing, like an informational mailing that would be useful. Do I need a listing to do that? Or can I just do something with my own contact information? So with leases, she pay for half. Yeah, they yeah, do like half. Right. So I did a listing in Cape Point, and I think it was on Josh's. So you sold mm -hmm. one in Cape Point. Mm -hmm. You can take from the office. From the office. So I actually I didn't but even if you don't have one, if you don't have that. Well, you could you could do a um any broker ever so. Yeah. So I, want to do. I mean you're trying to do something informational. Like yeah, so I guess it's in the neighborhood. No. No, I'm not gonna steal it. And I'm no, 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 no. Actually, I was gonna. I, I was stealing it from somebody else. It's a spin on somebody else. Doing. I was gonna uh -huh. do something in June or in like May or June on um, like uh, early bird dinner things. Okay. In the area. Oh, mm -hmm. for, that's cool though. Yeah. You know, it's fine. I or, mean, or like stuff like that. You you could do any type of mailing. It just has to have company information right. on right. it. Has to say home sales on each. Right. You can't, I don't use have someone, you can't use anything that says no no advertising. Right. Like a, I don't know he's trying to advertise property. I think he's trying to advertise Makes something sense. unique to the area, but with the spin on it that hey, I'm a realtor. So but mm -hmm. Lisa's program, yeah. you can't do that. It's only yeah. yeah. No, but it's only what? You have to have like basically have your own list, not your own, but For you can ours, use Josh's yeah. listing, you can use our listing. I've got to have a list and you have to get, yeah, with that's that gonna program, be just based around a property. That program, but like yeah. you can use quantum digital or another another couple yeah. um that are that are well known and you could create your own. You can do a custom one. You don't need a listing for that at all but you would have to be consistent with it because you know you'd have to do one a month for like a year yeah mailers, so that, mailers they just throw away they have no idea yeah they, no you think they're pretty useless no 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 i don't, I don't. I i've don't. gotten listings you're gonna them. get a lot of them the problem is consistency right so a lot of agents will do one two three even four or five they're like ah oh, this doesn't work i've got to call and then they stop it and it's not cheap no i know but it's gonna take consistency but I, I will tell you that there's been times where I've done mailers in certain communities of, you know, just friends I know that live in there or wherever the case may be. And I didn't get a call after like six months. But my buddy was like, dude, I was at an HOA meeting. He's on the HOA board. He's like, everybody was talking about the flyers. But so like people saw them. It's just the flyers work differently. Like I've had, I've sent one batch of flyers up and got a call on the listing off. Mm -hmm. So it's timing. Like you could be ready to sell your house. You get a flyer that morning, like the, like this girl from Michigan. And you'd be like, oh, cool, I want someone house today. I'm calling that guy. So it's all timing. Or you could not have any idea to sell your house. You get flyers for six years, and then that guy's going to be ingrained in your head. You're going to see him all the time for six years. Mm -hmm. So you're going to remember to go right to him. I want someone house. Oh, cool. I remember Joe or Tim. I got his flyers all the time for six years. So it's a matter of timing, too. You just don't want to give up on it. Because then you learn that when you give up on it, then you that's when you wasted your money. Right, right. But I know Josh does them. He's got good luck with them. I've done them. 
that he's done them, we all got pretty good luck with them. You so. just have to have to have to stay. Yes, mm -hmm. you have to. Yeah, and you'll be times where you're like, oh, I haven't gotten anything off of this for four or five months. And it only don't takes give one, up. Though. Yeah, it only takes one, takes one to pay for yeah. all of that yeah. and more. Right. But you know, for you, you may want to just like honestly, if I were you, I would stick to maybe 50. Just mm -hmm. keep it yeah. at a minimum. Like, don't try to do all of John's do, yeah. Just do like 50 houses, keep really? your costs well, low. You? Where where are you at? Like Green's Cave, I'm near the Tennis Court. So what I would do is my section, my community, right? How many, how many homes yeah, are in my there? community? Hundred. All right, call it fifty. But the reason why I would say that is because those fifty neighbors of yours, you have a better chance of running into right? executed on one. Coming in, coming out, no, mailbox, walk, whatever. Well, I probably do them in one other place. community next door. Right, that's right. what I'm saying. But you have a better chance of actually getting a face to face. And if your picture's on it, they're like, oh man, I just got your flyer. Boom, now you can connect. Right, because they know you now. Hey, Tim's my neighbor, but he's also the realtor. You know, um, from my house, if I step out of my front door and I look to the left and to the right, I've sold one house three times, the other house two times, or I'm sorry, three times, and the house across the street twice. All from stepping outside of my front door because everybody back there knows that I'm the realtor. You know, and uh, it's just I have a tremendous value there. I sold more than anybody in my community. There. So I would have personally for your goal plan, I would concentrate right yeah. up because you know the best. that market. Right you know there. about yeah. the HOA. You yeah, know, yeah, don't you do all of John things because right. you'll do a one and done. One You're like, oh, I'm going to send it yeah. to 5,000 homes, 1,000 yeah. homes, whatever the number is. And it's going to be very costly. You're going to do it. You probably won't get one uh, listing off of one set of flyers to the yeah. whole community. That's and expensive. then next month, you're going to be like, hey, I need to send yeah. something out next month. And then you're going to be like, oh, that was a little too expensive. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to cut it back. Then you're going to cut it back. Or you're just not going to do it. And that's what people, a lot of people do. Now, if you keep it, if there's you do the, same runs, the whole year or do you change it up? No, do you just want to change it up? Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. You, you could, you know, you could have a rotation. I mean, if you're doing it monthly, you could have, you know, four different ones that you send right. out every fourth month. It goes back to the first. They're month. all made on your, on the site and you can just pick. But one. what, you know, your, what your play is, you're trying to bring, it sounds like from what I'm understanding, you're trying to bring outside information into your community and being the point of contact by doing so, you know, and then saying, hey, I'm, I'm a realtor, which is a smart play because you're adding value to the neighborhood rather than just trying to sell the mm -hmm. house or say, yeah. I can sell your house. Because mm -hmm. every fucking listing that comes through here says, hey, I can sell your house. Okay, mm -hmm. great. But Tim's the one that said, hey, there's an early bird or there's a happy hour or there's a whatever over here. And that's what I've been looking for. And I can have to mm -hmm. find it. Right. Now they like you. I don't it, know if they like me, but that's all <laughs> That's what you should put on one of your postcards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, say, I don't know if you're going to like me, but whatever you're going to say. But, check out but the I'm early fun. Yeah. But I'm fun. And so, here's a you know, actually, happy hour. Me. Everybody thinks because I was a lobbyist, I was fun guy. I was actually more like, you know. You're just fun in your retirement. Oriented. You're fun in your retirement. Well, I don't have the pressure, financial no. pressure I used to have on me. <laughs> it's, a it's a bitch. Well, Tula, thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you so much. I really appreciated all the conversation. You bet, sweet. <laughs> if you need anything, okay. you know, just give us a call. Okay? Sorry about that. I will do. All right. Thanks for joining okay. us, honey. Bye-bye. See ya. What about it that Bye. everybody else who's on likes to hear that.